Hi friends, this is Debbie. I am playing with, staying kind of with this tropical thing that I am absolutely loving. Uh, I'm pretending I'm in Hawaii and I'm sitting and I can feel the breezes and sipping on my uh, virgin mocktail, maybe a coconut drink with the umbrella, right? And so I'm really getting into this whole uh, tropical thing. What I love about these uh, tropical leaves, and I know we grow them here too. I actually have a girlfriend that just sent me a picture of this exact leaf, um, and they are giant, is the colors in them are so absolutely beautiful. And that's what we're going to be working on today. So I've got, um, I am waiting on my Artisto pads. They still haven't arrived. So meanwhile, I'm using this Arches paper, which is a fabulous textured cold press 140 pound paper. Um, it's a little pricey for me to paint on every day. So I am a little bit uh, frugal in using it and usually use those Artisto pads, but this is great. By the way, if you don't have your Artisto pads, uh, they did change the cover, which I love. It's a bright purple like this. So excited to get mine. I also purchased some bigger Artisto pads. Uh, but what I just love about these is that they have the spiral. So you can date these books when you fill them up. You can keep them. They're like a little journal of your watercolor journey. And uh, if you wanted to pull one out, they are perforated. They've got great texture and they're pretty reasonable. Okay, the brush I will be using today will be my Princeton Velvet Touch, number eight round. If you um, are a beginner, and I completely understand you don't want to right away invest in the more expensive Princeton brushes, these Degatos. I will share are absolutely wonderful for the price. I've been using them for about five months and I love them. They still have a beautiful tip and those are working really well. And last thing, I'm going to be using probably a combo of my Winsor Newton and my My Lane palette. Um, another great, great uh, starter set for the beginner. It has all these beautiful colors so you don't have to mix. They're very creamy and vibrant. I love them and they're a great price point. Uh, of course, I'm going to be using my also my Winsor Newton and we will go through right now the colors. Um, so let's see, let's use this little swatch sheet here. And I think the colors I'm envisioning, I'll put several here. So of course, I'm always using my uh, looks like I got a little yellow in there. Might be interesting, right? My sap green. And you've got that beautiful thinner tea consistency. And then I've got my olive green, which I really love. Not sure how much I will use that today because I really want to stay kind of light and bright and some blues in here and maybe some yellows but i do have that ready to go when you're painting wet in wet it's a good idea to have your colors mixed and on your palette ready to go and the reason for that is if you're moving quickly which you are when you're using the technique wet in wet because you want your paint to be wet right if by the time you go grab the paint you want and get it in your palette, get the consistency and the value, your paint might have dried. So keep that in mind and try to have all the colors you're going to be using. This is Cad Yellow, ready to go in your palette. And that way you don't risk, um, you know, your paint drying before you can get back to it. So I've got that cad yellow, sap green, olive green. Now let's play with a little bit of blue. And just a note, if you're using your um, My Lang palette, 
their true green and sap green or true it's called true green and yellow green is absolutely beautiful for tropical plants you could also get this color by using your Winsor Newton colors just mixing a um, uh, your sap green and a little yellow but I just absolutely love that color and this is included in that my lane okay so the last color I'm gonna play with is some of these blues i am got a turquoise blue which is Winsor Newton it's a beautiful blue for these tropical leaves and then I'm also going to put in my palette Prussian blue if you're using the my Lang, they actually have a I think they call it let's see here they have Prussian blue that's what they call it and the other blue you could use kind of funny I always chuckle to myself when I use this my Lang palette because they call it turkey blue but it's really turquoise blue I think it's just something in the translation okay let's get started so we will be using our <clears throat> excuse me sap green uh, let's see here let's pick up some of that sap green there we go and when I create my swatches for my paintings I like to add water pull them out and play with those values so I can see how light and dark I get and then I'll be adding in maybe a little bit of the um, kind of olive green again wash rinse my brush add a little water and pull it out so I can see exactly how light those values so the lighter the value the more water and then if you want to see just what that uh, tree green looks like in the my lane which you can again create with your Winsor Newton by mixing sap green and a little yellow there's that I just think that's such a beautiful color um, our turquoise Ooh, look at how beautiful oh I love this that's gonna be there we go so then maybe a little Prussian blue which I will most likely using that wet on wet make sure it's blending well because that can be quite vibrant and then let's just throw some cad yellow on here just in case we want to mix that in a bit there we go and I think that'll be it. I think I'll stay within this range of colors, but look at how beautiful all those are. So this is the swatch sheet you get with the digital download, and I'll name all the colors for you. If you want to follow my color palette, uh, you know, please use your own color palette as well. And you'll get this drawing so that you can print it out and use carbon paper or maybe a light box or if you're a good drawer you could just draw it out the other thing you will get is i give you these brush strokes so let's just practice a bit with that wet and wet because that's basically what we're going to be using in this leaf here so i'm wetting my brush and let's just practicing that wet and wet so the key to wet and wet is you don't want puddles you don't want if you if I were to lift this paper up I would not have drips and puddles now if I want to go into that with let's see what color could we go in there with maybe a little bit of yellow look at that beautiful blend I get Let's go in with a tiny bit of blue. Look, oh, I just love this turquoise with the green. It is so beautiful. So that's the colors we want. Let's try a little bit of the, um, oh, let's see. What other color could we throw in there to try out? How about, meanwhile, this is drying, so I don't want to think too much here. Let's see what this uh, Myling Light Sky Blue looks like. That's pretty, too. 
think I like the turquoise better. And then maybe the last one, although I didn't put it on my swatch sheet, is this beautiful Quinn. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. That is a brand new color I got because it reminded me so much of that beautiful pinkish hue in some tropical plants. So the key to wet on wet is making sure that that first layer isn't drippy, puddly, pooly. If you held your paper up, it wouldn't all drip to one side. It's just got this beautiful sheen and you can move the paper around, but it's just a shine and a sheen. And then making sure when you go in to that, you have a the same amount of water on your brush with pigment so when you're picking up the pigment you may tap it off you may dab it to get rid of a little bit making sure that you're going in with equal amounts of water on both but look at how beautiful that is and you can always play with now this is drying so i don't want to touch it too much but you can always play and move around the paint to get a little bit better spread. A trick is you can also blow and that really blends things out. Um, yesterday, the girls on our Zoom class, uh, we used a straw and that was really fun too. All right, so that's basically the techniques we're gonna be using. I will probably also be using um, the side of my brush and coming into a point. So doing something like this, because these leaves are so thick, I will most likely be using point, laying down the side of my brush, so I'm pushing enough to spread out, and then pulling like this. That kind of creates a perfect little leaf stroke. Then I can go back with just a damp brush. So for some of these little leaves here, I think that's beautiful. So something like this, I can use the side of my brush, come up on the edge, just like that. And it creates these beautiful leaves. Then I will be going in there with some of these colors that we used up here tapping in you can now blow on that i got a little bit too much water there as you can see it's puddling so i did exactly what i just told you not to do what i did is when i picked up my paint i didn't tap it off and get rid of some of that extra paint or you can just tap off on here so what happened is when i laid it down it just turned into a big puddle and you can let that spread. You can use the blowing technique and just spread it out a little. Okay, so let's get going here. I'm excited to paint these. This is quite the grand elephant leaf. We had these when I was a kid and I just thought they were so fun. All right. We're, we want to create some light in these as well. So what I'm going to do first, you always start with the lightest value. So I'm going to start with a very washy, just meaning it has a lot more water. Doesn't mean you have more water necessarily on your brush, but there's just the ratio of water to paint. There's more water. So you get, it's diluted. So you're getting that light value. If you're not sure, just go back to your value chart and you can, I always keep an extra little paper and I test and I say, okay, yep, that's the value I want. So I've got a good ratio there. And let's go in and start just putting this light wash on here. I'm adding water. And I typically, when I'm painting this large of a sheet of paper, I will go in and um, do one section at a time. So I don't wanna fill this whole 
leaf because by the time I came back to work on this, everything's gonna be dry. So just filling in maybe these two leaves here, just like that. And then let's go in with a little bit of that blue. So I'm picking up some of that turquoise. And if you need to tap off on your uh, paper towel, do so. And I notice it's always darker near the center vein. So I'm kind of flicking out. I'm tapping in where it's dark here. And then just kind of drawing out, rinsing and washing my brush. Now, as soon as you see a puddling effect happening, just dry your brush off and you can go in and just, while this is wet, you can kind of play, move it around. Okay, and we're going to glaze, so we'll go over this. Now, I might just pick up a tiny bit of that yellow, but be careful because uh, cad yellow is very, very intense. So find that value you want. It's like T. And let's just tap in here and there. Look how pretty. Yeah, I like that. That's really pretty. Might go in with my dark green. Add a little water. And make sure and, t oops, sorry, I'm not showing you what I'm doing here and make sure you're tapping off either here or on your paper towel. And I'm just gonna darken this one side. There we go. Look how pretty that is. If you wanna soften this edge, which I always soften all my edges, I just go in with a damp, not totally wet, damp uh, brush and just run it along the edge. Now I feel like I want this to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna dip into a little bit of that Prussian blue, mix it with my green, tap off, because you don't want those drips, and just tap in here. And then we'll leave this, because we can always build layers. Okay, look how pretty. If you want that blend, just blow on it. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, this whole leaf is gonna be gorgeous, guys. Now let's go back in and start again over here. I think I will take it all the way to here. And I wanna pick up, let's see, what color did I use there? I think I used that my Lang tree green, which is just for you Windsor Newton people just some sap green with yellow in it that you've hopefully prepared beforehand. And I'm just dipping a little bit into my water, but not too much. I don't, I just remember this wet wash, we want to be really shiny, but not puddling or pooling, right? So just like that, it's got a beautiful little shine to it. Okay, now we'll go in and start adding some of these other colors. So the base next to this vein is a little darker. And I think what I'll do is first go in with that turquoise because layers are so beautiful in watercolor. You can see all the different layers. They just show through. So I'm just tapping in to that turquoise, tapping on the side of my well to get rid of any access, excess, and then letting that kind of blend in. You can blow again. Let's see if I have a straw so I don't have to pick it up. There you go. Yeah, look at that, isn't that beautiful? And we'll go in and add a little bit of our sap green, just here and there.
Getting all these beautiful colors to blend. Oof, this is what excites me about watercolors. Look at how beautiful that's blending. Um, I'm going to go in and grab a little bit of that Prussian blue. Make sure and tap off. This color is really intense, guys. And just let that spread. Now we'll go in and do some more layers with that, okay? So I think that that part of the leaf is good. Let's continue here. I'm going to pick up again that light green. Just add water to it. Because you're just creating that bottom glaze we're starting with on all of these. Now this is where I'm gonna use the side of my brush because I want to cover a lot of space. Now that's pretty intense, so what I want to do is wet my brush and just pull some of that color down like that. Okay. There we go. I might just feather that out a little bit. We can always go over that. There we go. There's also a different way to approach this. You could paint the whole leaf with this light glaze of yellow green, but I really, um, I like working one at a time. So that's, that's kind of up to you, whatever you want to do. And I'm just using the tip of my brush light pressure. Let's go in, just repeat that whole process, tapping into that turquoise. just darkening around the vein like that. Maybe use a little bit of that olive green. Really get playful with this. This is one of the reasons why I love painting uh, organic foliage and flowers because you can really get creative. I'm going to use my straw Get that to blend a bit, and then let's add in our Prussian blue, making sure you're not picking up too much. You're just putting the tip in and you're dabbing off, because that color, my friends, will take over your whole entire picture in a quick second. Okay, now I will blow again. Hopefully my big old head didn't just get in the picture, right? There we go. I got a couple drips here I'm just gonna pick up. Now another fun thing you can do is dip some water on here. Now this might be too wet or dry, but because leaves have these kind of washy watermarks, it's kind of fun to do that. There we go. You could use salt too. Salt's kind of fun, but I think more the washiness is better. And then let's pick up some of our sap green. Now see my paper started drawing. So what I wanna do is I wanna go in with a damp brush and just soften a little bit some of those edges. Maybe leave that one. There we go. Okay. Look how beautiful this is already turning out. Are you getting as excited as me? Do you just wanna pick up your brushes and do this with me? I hope so. Uh, let's see, let's go on to our next little set. So starting with that, ooh wee guys, look how bright that is. So don't freak out. Let's just wet our brush a bit, tap it off and spread it around a bit. There we go. Add a little bit more water. Just getting that very light hue. And there we go. Okay. And blooms actually, for me on plants, are just fine. That doesn't bother me at all. 
picking up a little bit of that turquoise or turkey blue if you're using the My Lang. <laughs> I'm tapping in. See, I've got some blooms here where I tapped on that water and I'm quite fine with that. And then maybe some of that deep green. There we go. I'll soften those edges so I wet my brush, kind of tap it off so it's damp, and then I just go along that edge. And just feather it out, soften it out. There you go. Okay, let's go in with some of that dark blue, that Prussian blue. And we can blow on that. There we go. Okay, let's keep moving. We'll come back to this one, picking up some of that green. Don't get worried, like that is quite vibrant. I'm just gonna add some water to it. It wasn't quite the light value I was going for, but that's okay. There we go. Just play, don't freak. There we go. And we'll go into the center with that tiny bit of turquoise. There we go. Maybe some of that olive green. Just running it right along that vein. And I feel like I want to do a tiny bit of this turquoise with some of that light, light green. Look how pretty that is. And mixing that in there. Ooh, that is pretty. Yeah. I like that. Now to the other side, we're just going back and forth, very relaxing, right? So I'm not really using the lightest value, but what I am doing is going back in and lightening it up with some water. Like that. just love these greens. Are they just so beautiful, right? Remember these leaves when I was a kid were bigger than my head. We had them around our pool. Going into that turquoise, just tapping in. And I just thought they were so cool. My dad used to call them elephant ears. And they certainly looked like that. Okay, maybe a little, just mixing up, you know, really just go with what greens are kind of calling to you. And really play with what you enjoy. Just softening that. Go in with that Prussian and olive green. Like that. And there you go. I think we'll add a little bit of those colors to maybe parts of these. So now I'm working wet into dry and as you see I've got this hard line so I go back in and just play with that and you could do that in a few places but let's leave that to the end I'm gonna blow on this again there we go and let's move on to our next leaf we're getting close here folks 
using the side of my brush so I can cover more space here. And if you want to lighten that, just add some water to it. There we go. Maybe just add a little splotch here and there because leaves have that right. Now I see I just painted over my hole there, so I'm going to try and lift a little bit of that. I'm drying off my brush. So there I was able to lift. Some colors are easier to lift than others. It just kind of depends. Um, let's go in and let's see, let's make a turquoisey blue and add in to some of these, just some splotches here and there. Something like that. Just really plain here. Okay. Move on to our next one. So I'm going back into that light value. Again, if you're not sure, just grab your little swatch sheet and practice that value you would like. And painting around. Don't do like me and paint over those holes. And again, if you would like this um, companion piece that goes with these tutorials with all these drawings, color swatches, I have those on Etsy. They take me a little while to get up, but uh, they're $10 and you can just download them. Okay, and then back into the middle with that dark green. Ooh. Now see, I had a lot more water on my brush, so you see what it did there? It really spread out. So what I would do in that case is uh, just blow a little bit and get it to mix a tad. Okay, next leaf here. We're getting to the end here, guys. Oh, I colored in that hole again. My goodness. Ooh. So I'll go in, dry my brush, and pick, lift that off is what they call that. Let me dry my brush really good and go in. I don't know why I keep coloring in those holes. I might be able to wet that too and pick up some of that. Yeah. Okay, we're all good. I'm not gonna stress. Um, you might even do some little splattering, but be kind of careful because that splattering could go all over the place. Pick up some olive green. We just wanna create some real fun. Now this leaf, we didn't do anything to, did we? It's basically as it began, let's just go in and maybe add in a little bend in the leaf. Something like that. So I picked up some paint and I'm just going to tap into the end there. It kind of gives it this feeling that it's bending over. Softening that line with just a damp brush. Okay, maybe blow on that. There we go. I could even soften that just a bit. So I did a little bit of lifting there. Huh. As I'm painting with you, I'm watching these little squirrels playing outside my window. They hide their nuts in the funniest place. Matter of fact, I have a palm tree 
outside and they hide their nuts in it all the time. It's so funny. I'm gonna go along the whole side of that. Just like that. Wash and dry my brush. Soften that line. Okay. Put in a little bit more here. So I'm laying that paint down and then I'm going back in and just softening it a little bit. Just these little washes. There we go. Okay, let's go in and maybe darken one of these. So this is dry, I'm wetting it a little bit of water and then I'll go in and drop in a little paint over there as well. So we're kind of getting these folds and bends that I think is really, really pretty. Maybe do a dark bend over here so I will wet this as well. Make sure it's dry first. And, oops, I don't know what I had on my brush there. And I don't like that puddling, so I'm drying my brush off and picking a little bit of that up. Go in with some more paint. Tap in. And to get that to blend, you could blow on it, but I'm good with it. So let's do our last little piece here. There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, look how pretty that is. I'm going to make the tip a little darker so it looks like it's kind of curving over. Now this, this branch was dry, so that's why it didn't spread like these two. So I'll go in, wet my brush, just allowing it to be damp and do something like that. Same with here. Just softening that edge. Softening that edge. So I wanted to kind of make it look like it was folding over a tad. Let's mix some of that Prussian blue with our green. And tap into the edges. Like that, ooh, yeah, I like that a lot. So it kind of gives this feeling of the branch curling over, right? Now if we want to draw some of that out, like that. Rinse, wash your brush. Dry it a bit and just soften those edges. pulling some of that paint up into the rest of the leaf there. And I feel like I want to go in and maybe just add some more of this curling leaf like here. So let's pick up some of that dark green. Yeah, that olive and I added in some of that Prussian tap off so you're not going in there with a loaded brush with water. There we go. Oh, this little squirrel's just having a good time. He's staring at me now. And I might just pull that upwards like that. Tap in a tiny bit more with that dark green. Like that. Yeah, 
I like that. Using the side of my brush. And I might even leave that a hard edge. I think I'm actually quite liking that, which is really unique for me because I don't usually like those hard edges. But I think I'm gonna leave that in this case. It kind of has a nice touch. I'm mixing a little bit of my olive green and my blue tap off and let's do that again over here. Well now I have completely covered over that little hole, darn it. I will soften that edge a tiny bit. There we go. I'm going to leave that hard edge though. So this is kind of a lesson in me to play with these hard edges. I don't usually like the hard edges, but I'm kind of liking it in this one, right? Let's go in with some of that Prussian blue. Yeah, that's a pretty color. And let's just tap in, tap in. Look at how beautiful that is. Yeah, I'm really liking this. There we go, so we've got some of these hard edges. I'm kind of proud of myself for allowing those to be because that is very much not a me thing. Might even go into this and just Maybe curl over some of those leaves like that. Kind of give some of that curling effect. Just went in and lightened that a little bit. See, I just, it's really hard for me to leave those dark edges, isn't it? Those hard edges, rather. I don't know why that is. There we go. So there you go. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I might go in and darken a little bit of these areas. Just to really bring out this main vein here. To really make that pop. I'm really getting into the hard edges now, aren't I? Something like that, but look at how much fun that is. Maybe one more here and then I am going to let this be before I overwork this poor beautiful leaf. There we go. So there you go. I hope you give this a try. Again, I'll list this whole tutorial kit. It's $10 um, on my Etsy site and um, it'll have the drawing and the swatch and all those fun things. And I hope you give this a try. We could have even added some of that beautiful coral, Quinn coral in here would have been really pretty too. Next time. All right, everybody, have fun, and I will talk to you soon. Make sure and let me know if you're enjoying these tropicals. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.